Hello and welcome back to the Old Bull Young Buck, best podcast in Australia, certainly in WA. Uh, my name's David Mundy and with me is my little co-host with a combined almost 400 games, Griffin Logue. How are you, mate? Yes, thanks, Dave. Little, little co-host. It changes each week. Work colleague to little co-host. Uh, yeah, as you said, 396 games between us now. I was, uh, felt pretty privileged at the sitting at the table last week. Would have been 700 odds. So, um, yeah, no, going well, mate. How are you going? Going very well, obviously a great win on the weekend, but um, we know what a diligent athlete and performer you are. Little story coming out of yesterday, recovery session at Leighton Beach. There was yeah. your own little uh, parade at the Orange Box at Leighton. Bit, to of, through that? bit of a cheer squad. It was pretty, um, yeah, it's probably the most nerve wracking, or no, most nervous I've ever been, kind of embarrassed almost, to be honest. Walking down uh, into Orange Box Cafe just down to Leighton Beach, the local, uh, walked in and it's kind of an outdoor setting, so if anyone's been there, but uh, a couple of tables of uh ladies just kind of clap clap us in on on, on the way in says so myself uh lobby Heath chapman and uh hayden young so a bit of a bit of a clap and everyone's head turned. was a bit uh, a bit awkward for a bit but now nah, it, it was a good win anyway the story so. coming in was that it was close to a standing ovation the entire orange box going nuts and because you could see the beach you already just down into your budgies bit of mayo now um, mate you push it really really push it now but weren't in the budgies not yet so nah it's good um anyway we had uh Pav on last week. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you think? Bit of Fremantle royalty. It was nice to yeah. see the big fella. And um, he's still looking in great nick, isn't he? You can roll him out at He's a good specimen. He's a good specimen, to say the least. So you reckon he's, deep down, he's probably still a bit flat. You reckon that you're kind of taking well, him over? Or? Yeah, the beginning of his speech uh, before the game, when he presented me with my game jumper, he mentioned that it was a, a sad day for yeah. him. So um, deep, deep down, he probably. Yeah. No, I know that he's stoked. And as I've mentioned a few times, he's got plenty of other records that he can hang his hat on and, yeah. and things like that. So I'm sure giving it one is not that bad, is it? No, he's been around, mate. I reckon he's, I reckon he's safe as ours. So. Uh, what was your favourite bits from our Pav chat? Any, anything stick out in particular? Um, oh, not really. Club <laughs> <laughs> nah, legend. Just kidding. Nah, he's out. a club legend. I mean, it's, as you said, he's, the list goes on for what he's, what he's accomplished and what he's achieved. So um, he's still very humble and... Um, yeah, as I said, big, big, strong specimen. So it's good just to look at. I liked it how refreshingly heartfelt he was when we mentioned how quickly we wanted to get out of being a key back. Yep. Straight away. He Amen. Spent one season there and uh, didn't even hesitate, did he? Just but not, nah, cu- not cut out for the work, to be honest. So it's, it's all right. He'll... They're a different breed. Of the key yeah. Back. Yeah. Bloody uh, now, before we move on and introduce our guest, who I'm very excited to talk to today, we have sure a are. little bit of a public service announcement where. Yep. In some new surroundings today, this is another um, pod filming location, which is a little bit different from our Coburn base, but mm. uh, we're in Fremantle. We're at a new pop-up store. Uh, it's called The Dock Pop-Up. Uh, we're on Murray Street in Fremantle, really close to the train station. Market, Market Street, mate. Sorry, Market Street. That's right. Uh, really close to the train station. Uh, it's a new store for um, Fremantle. It's going to be open over spring and summer, so it's going to be ideal for the guys going down to watch the FLW at Freo Oval. Jump yep. off the train, grab some merch on the way to Freo Oval and cheer our girls on. So it is. Um, it's open this Thursday, August the 19th. August so, 19th, get down. Um, there's some pretty good gear in here. I'm looking at a big moose bit of banner gear. behind you there, which I don't know, you might take that one home actually. Mate. It's a bit scary, that one. They wouldn't want to put that one out the front. It would scare too many people off, I reckon. So. <laughs> You're up on the wall actually, Dave, so it's, uh, they've, done, they've done well. So uh, get down. Cheers, Thursday, August 19th. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, to the listeners and viewers... Uh, we've heard you. We have delivered for you. Man that has been mentioned in nearly every pod so far and probably has a story or two to tell. So only fair he uh, gets to stand up for himself. Tabs, welcome. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Tabs, no give me one too, mate. Thank you. How you going? How's the, how's the day? You just, had a, you just had a press conference for anyone uh, listening, but uh, he's going well. Yeah, good. Good to open up the team store. As you said, got the big banner of Moose. Glad to see they photoshopped out the pimples and stuff. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's decked out really nicely and good to go along with the Coburn team store. Great yeah. start, mate. No, Tabs goes whack. Any curly ones in your presser before? A little bit about the vaccination stuff. Um, you know, if, if the finals were to um, you know, be played in Perth, um, whether that whether we would be open to getting a, a vaccination and stuff. Um, obviously, um, our fate rests on a few other teams and us winning on the weekends. So, yeah, but that's about it. Love, love good curveball. Um, we start with nicknames, Tabs. So obviously, there's Tabs, Duck, Wayne, Autumn Leaves. Any favourites? Uh, yeah, probably um, the Autumn Leaves one was a good one. That, um, that dates back to 2014, I think. 
Uh, Ross, Ross Lyon and, Origin. Yeah, Ross in the, uh, I think post game, he, um, he said, Tabs, you like autumn leaves, mate? I didn't know what he was going on about. And then he proceeded to um, rake me up. He was raking the ground. Um, said, you're always on the ground. And, um, yeah, the, uh, the duck one, um, that's um, also, that's probably more um, down to Tommy. He, uh, I think Ross, after one of the games, I had a, quite a pretty good game, which was rare back then, and um, kicked a few goals. And, you know, head was a bit big and had a bit of swagger when I walked in on Monday and Ross said, oh, you look like a duck down there, mate, in a meeting or something. And then I think Tommy just, you know, reinforced it and, um, you know, just went with it and it sort of caught on. And, uh, yeah, even the game plan sort of tweaked. They, they had the, the pond for the ducks pond. It was a little bit yeah, of a right. hot spot where the ball would get kicked. Um, yeah, a bit of carry on, but, yeah, I wouldn't even carry uh, Wayne Carey's boot bag to the uh, game, so... <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Um, just harking back quickly to Autumn Leaves, it was your NFL fantasy team name for a little while. We're yeah. in a group with some past rare players. How, how would you rate yourself at the NFL fantasy game? Yeah, well, we've got the, uh, um, what is it, the Legacy League? What's it called? The Dynasty League this year where you hold on to a couple of keepers um, for the next season. So I went with a youth policy last year and <laughs> got a couple of gems, DK Metcalf, CD Lamb. So, yeah, I had to take a hit last year and just... You know, make up the nut. Oh, I think I was in the in the finals, but um, didn't really fire a shot. But yeah, we went for a um, yeah youth pro yeah youth process, and I'll be good for a few years to come. I reckon. So. Good stuff, mate. All better the best. Than, uh, the- better than Moose, who's got I think his keeper is Tom Brady, who's forty three years old, <laughs> so he might get you know one more year out of him. Ain't nothing, nothing wrong with the Tom Brady. Still still yeah. kicking on. Bar- bar- are you in that? You in that? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. a co-owner with Zach Dawson. With, co-owner, we've yeah. previously won a championship and uh, are in for a really good year again. We've got our draft coming up, so all the best with that, yeah. Dark. Um, you you in a league this year? Um, started one just with – I'm in one with Tommy Sheridan that's soon to soon to be released. So, Tommy. What's the what's buy-in? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, haven't gone over the uh, particulars of it yet. So Tommy Sheridan thinks twi- in many twi- pies. Twi- so twi- probably twist twi- 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 probably, probably whatever Tommy wants. So, so we've been um, – uh, lobbying you for a long time, Duck, to get on here. And um, one of the requisites for your contribution to our pod was that you got the right of rebuttal with a number of stories that have popped up. We've, uh, we've got a few here to go through and we'll get a few new ones from you a bit later on in the pod. But um, let's start first with Tommy Sheridan. Story about late night NBA 2K and yep, uh, yep. getting the cops called. How just, accurate is Tommy? Yeah, just want to know, were the cops called who won the no, game no and, who's, and who's the better yeah. player? Just the thing, the thing with Tommy is he gets, you know, there's an element of truth to it, but he just plucks, you know, the best parts from numerous stories and morphs it into one ultimate story. <laughs> and, you know, he says on a podcast, gets his 1,000, you know, followers for it. And then, you know, that's his, that's his model. But uh, I think I gave him the beating. And, yeah, we were in the uh, – we had the – we are in um, South Free or whatever there and we had uh, – we actually had the trophy made up for, you know, whoever won the um, the most amount of games. I think you had to beat the champ, whoever the um, champ at the time was, uh, two consecutive games, something like that. And uh, once it went in Craig Moller's hands, like the trophy never left. He was yeah. just too good. Um, he's obviously in the NBL now. And I think he had a little stint, you know, in the eSports. I think, yeah, he was a seriously good FIFA player. But with that story, you know... I, I think I smashed the fan once, but um, <laughs> yeah, Tommy wasn't. Yeah, Tommy wasn't. Uh, yeah, a saint either. He was. Um, I think yeah, early days, you, you know, you'd be up till two playing fever because of that bloke. He's um, <laughs> you beat him and you say you're going to bed or you leave. You got to leave his house and you stand in front of the door. You know, <laughs> seventy kilos, bang him out of the way, <laughs> and then you got to jump in your car and you lay lay down on the back tire so he would drive off. And, uh, yeah, so. So there's a bit of the element of truth to it is just yeah. the, the double or nothing stakes where Tom just wouldn't let you leave. Yeah, I think I had, yeah, he'd just double or nothing anything. So it was just monopoly money in the end. It just, <laughs> yeah, never get paid. But And so if yeah, you sit down. I was a better player, obviously. And Yeah, um, I was going to say, if you, were sit, if you were to sit down right now, yeah, you would smash him. At yeah, I'd anything? smash him. Or... I was in the, the, he had the lockdown league uh, and we played a game and it was a shambles. I was the first game and, you know, we had FIFA? some. Yep. Yeah, we had some lag. Some connection issues. I was playing Rory Atkins at the time, and yeah, so um, got the roar into the stick there. But um, in terms of Tommy, yeah, he's he's competitive. He never gives up. Doesn't matter if he's five nil down, he'll keep keep going. And um, whereas Griff, 
you know, I taught him everything he's, he knew. I think he picked up a controller probably like 18 months ago and yeah, he's improved, but yeah, I'm still I'm still the one to be, I think. <laughs> probably has more shots, but you just you don't know. want to don't want to, don't want to bring it up, but just only as good as your last is something I always live by. So Yeah, well you always yeah. You always go, you beat him and he's Looks back to the shot count. I've had 20 shots, rah, rah. <laughs> throwing Birkenstocks at me. You know. <laughs> Popped an ice pack yesterday. <laughs> Exploded on me, so yeah. That's actually true. Yeah, I did, but, I did. Um, and we'll stick with Tommy. So another one was uh, about pranking waiters overseas. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, so this is more Tommy. But um, yeah, whenever we uh, get a bottle of wine, um, you know, they oblige and say, would you like to test it? They pop the cork. <laughs> And Tommy, whenever he like uh, would test it, <laughs> it's funny because when when Tommy explains, he goes, "Yeah." And when Duck, whenever we test it, he'd al he'd always grab it and you know. No, nah, no, nah, I'd, I'd never do it. I was gonna be. They take offense to it over there. It was Tommy would like sniff the wine and scrunch the face up and then have a sip and pretty much like spit it back in his cup. And they were genuinely like, "Yeah," they were offended. And he'd be like, ah, "Nah, mate, just joking." And yeah, bit of carry on, but yeah, good fun. One thing that uh, I saw over there, I. Moving on from Tommy, sorry, this was with Moose is when we when we went away overseas a few times. Um, first one, Moose's story was that you'd take charge with kind of directions and stuff, and yeah. it's kind of your way or the highway. Give us the sorry, give us the duck impersonation you gave. Oh, the it's time. just head down in the phone and it's <laughs> arm behind saying, "Come on, follow." <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Come on, come on. But to your credit, you know, he did all the research, so that's probably pretty yeah. true, isn't it? Blind leading the blind, but Moose, he, early, I think back in 2015, he would just like. He was like a shocking morning person. Yeah. Wake up. He just couldn't get going in the morning. You know, I'd be in another room and I'd hear this alarm going off and Moose would be like sleeping right next to it, not like <laughs> batting an eyelid. I, re I remember in Paris, he would, he actually fell asleep, you know, standing up, leaning against the pole. So that's, um, yeah, good fun, but yeah, not a morning person. And no, yeah, not. especially with Clarky, you know, I think the crew was usually Clarky, Matt DeBoer. Bit of an in between his crew actually, but um, <laughs> well, yeah, there wasn't too much direction. A couple of ends of the spectrum there. You and Matty yeah. DeBoer at Matty one end, and Matty DeBoer is good. And, and you know, as you know, he's got gets uh, gets a bit FOMO if he misses out. So you know, <laughs> he'll be keen for anything. But uh, cool. another one from Moose was uh, the Dubrovnik phone incident. It fell off the wall, broke, oh. take took to the Serbian. Yeah, forgot about that one actually. <laughs> yeah, um, had to take the Serbian electronics down in. Yeah, I don't know where Griff was at that stage. I think he, uh, yeah. He was on that Europe trip. Oh, we're in Dubrovnik, where they film, film Game of Thrones. So we're on the um, castle walls, walking around. Um, and this, um, this girl said, oh, do you mind taking a photo for me? This big Nikon camera thing. I didn't know how to operate the thing. So I um, took charge. Um, as I did that, I put my phone on the ledge, um, got to take a snap, trying to work it. And then we just see it like in the peripheral, my phone was sliding off the edge of this like um, this wall. <laughs> Slow motion. Fell down, probably like, yeah, 20 meters, um, almost hit someone in the, in the head down below. <laughs> it was like a maze. I had to have Moose stand up there and like keep eye, an yeah. eye on the phone so no one picked it Spotter. up. And run, I, I ran down, um, you know, t after about 25 minutes, got down there. And it, took, it took 25 minutes to do it. Mate, it was, was it? a maze. I didn't know where I was. I thought it was in Game of Thrones. How many times did you get lost? Uh, oh, there was dead ends and all sorts, mate. I had knights trying to fight me off there in the castle. But um, <laughs> somehow the phone, I think it was still working. It still had a pulse. But um, yeah, we. Um, I think the final blow happened at Havar later that trip where, um, again, slipped out of the pocket and just didn't take as much of an um, impact. But it was got it fixed it in Serbia, store. I think. Some dodgy joint. No apple saw in Serbia, apparently. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And no ongoing issues with uh, being tracked or money going missing or no, nah, nothing. Like that? Nah, still got, still got the issues with the smash phones, as you can see here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Go through> about, <laughs> um, happen? Yeah. Had a sh shock and track, uh, track record with phones then. Same thing happened in Japan, snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> snap, snap the GoPro as I was like, holding it. And I was like, oh my God. I went to like call my brother, grabbed my like phone out of my like. A ski jacket and that went flying out as well with blizzard <laughs> by the time i got back there all like the tracks were covered in like yeah a foot of snow and yeah don't try, probably thought out six months later and there'd be a phone phone there but yeah don't don't trust tabs with your electronics it seems yeah. and um yeah. ugly my favorite is the untucking of rally shirt uh first time we played them caleb yeah. sarong's favorite memories in his debut game as well so yeah yeah talk um, us through your thought process there 
Yeah, I, I think Cam McCarthy just said, someone's got to untuck that bloke's jersey. <laughs> and somehow I found myself in a centre square bounce and close enough to him. I think he dominated us that day. But, no, um, it was a little wrestle, push and shove at half time. Oh, I think that was before. No, I untucked Oh, you've done first. it twice. I, that didn't instigate it. Really sort of just, yeah, brushed it off. But um, that was against Colo and yeah. I think Caleb's first game then um, you know, stuck up for me and copped a, copped a couple of grand fine, I think, in his first game. I think Chip I said I'd get it, but... I'm not even sure if I did cover it in the end, but <laughs> you know, he, he won the Rising Star, so he's, he's a pretty right. good wicket. Yeah, he's probably sorted out from now. Um, so it's a good rebuttal anyway. Um, from then, we'll move on. Before we get more into your journey, just uh, touch again on, on the weekend. Just uh, as we said, it was a pretty um, solid win, but any th any players stood out for you, Tabs, that you saw? Other, uh, other than yourself in the first quarter? Yeah, not, not uh, I probably didn't notice it. Uh, and give it enough credit, but yeah, Alex Pierce um, had some. We saw today in the footage had some like mm. match shaving moments uh, where he got a fingernail in, a couple of big tackles. Oh, I don't like to say it, but yourself, you're pretty pretty decent if you, wow. you come forwards. Um, Thanks, yeah, as obviously Caleb and Dave stepped up. It was big. It's a good goal, uh, Caleb's goal. Actually, you kicked, you, you kicked the first. Yeah, didn't you? You kicked yeah. The first. That was a nice one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Hunters, everything would have been happy. Yeah, everything of passing them off, those early ones. When you're in, if you're inside 50, you're having a, having a ping. Unless Ducks free. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm just going for it. But Caleb's yeah. was a good goal. That was, yeah. that was, that was, that was incredible. That was impressive to see. Well, yeah. What was your pre-game routine, Duck? Griff mentioned it quickly, but you just shot out of the blocks. Three goals in the first quarter, marking everything. Couldn't lay a glove on you. Oh, what that's, was your what, that's what happens when you get inside 50 <laughs> midfielders. I think we didn't have um, too many clean entries after that, but right place, right time. Uh, yeah, for some reason I had I get off. Yeah, the last couple of ones I've got off to a decent start um, in the derbies, and then yeah, probably like after that didn't didn't do too much for the game. Um, Just put the cue in the rack, don't you? Like kick, that, yeah, kick three in the first quarter. Yeah, ended uh, ended up being a bit of a uh, you know contest, and they fought back. And yeah, to their credit, they're they're a great team, and um, yeah. yeah, 50 50 k in the crowd as well would have been a good uh, rehearsal for finals football if it ends up. Coming over west is, is pretty good. The crowd, as, as the loudest I've ever heard it, to be honest. I don't, know, insane, I don't know about you blokes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, similar to, I think the first game against Essendon, we played at Optus going back a few years. That was yeah. that was up there and that was a pretty cool experience with the um, sort of twilight game. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's up there. Yeah, finals have to be in Perth, don't they? Oh, you think so? Especially it's with probably Melbourne. The, yeah, it's probably the best stadium, I'd say. I'd, yeah. I'd, I've played that and... Just for a spectator. Even the lights spectacle, that, that adds to it. I, I yeah. love that the whole. Pretty good. Dave, obviously a big week um, for you as well. Um, equaling Matty Pavlich's record, 353. It would yep. have been a big week for you and your family. You get to run out uh, with your family alongside you, which was probably, yeah. probably meant the world to you as well as leading the club. So, Yeah, and given the, um, the difficulties around travel and stuff with the 350th and um, not having any like sale of the kids or yeah. my mum and dad there or anything like that, um, yeah, it was really nice to share that with uh, with them and um, in particular my children who absolutely loved the change rooms and you probably saw yeah. the clip that Fremantle put out but they were actually running a mark in there as we were in our team meeting and stuff and uh, when we got out onto the ground, our boys just charged through the banner and had an absolutely ball. So, I mean, they've still got um, bits of the banner at home so they brought it yeah, home with them. And, um, one of my young fellas, Hudson, was given a game ball after the game and he actually slept with that last night. He asked me to go and get it out of the car and he slept with a game ball. So, um, yeah, it was really memorable for us all. And it was great to get the win in that yeah. kind of moment. So. How Makes was it having the old boys on the uh, side as you ran through the banner? Yeah, and, and all those kind of at odds and, and seeing the guys after the game at a function was um, was really great. I hadn't seen some of them for a little while. so yeah. um, And we've obviously been through a lot together yeah. through our time. So, yeah, it was really Definitely. nice. It's good, mate. It was played on your terms as well, the game. There's a bit of vision I reckon they'll – whack up online but it's been spoken about today i showed tabs the video yesterday if you are putting out the fake hand to lean ryan or someone i think i was i was in the tack when he's on top of me and you yeah. put up the fake hand to was it did you do that on purpose did you the oh, nice, I, david david money yeah. the nice guy have you you've given really. him the, the trick or i gave, gave him the down low too slow um yeah. <laughs> no well, i handballed it to you and you got tackled by yeah, yeah. um crips crips yeah. yeah and then we're all kind of together and um, Liam actually started a little bit of banter and said, oh, you didn't handle that brother, did you? And a you know, bit of back and forth. And I was actually going to help him up, but then you were dead fishing on him a bit and like playing, was, playing yeah. the dumb key back. Playing an egg, mate, playing an egg. And uh, it was 
defensive 50 stoppage so I had other things to worry about so yeah. um so he did do it. he did it on purpose oh I didn't do it on purpose he just took too long and couldn't get 110 kilo beast off him so yeah fair enough so <laughs> this whole story of you being the nice guy is just oh, I was a bit of cheeky fun as well yeah, so. fair enough yeah, so. um another thing that probably wasn't spoken about is kind of added into the uh, magnitude of the game you equally in the record was Healy's retirement yep. so it's obviously um pretty exciting to kind of have him in the huddle the, the one last time but at the same time um almost bittersweet I mean I didn't I didn't have as many years as you blokes um would have had with him but yeah how was that for you got you guys kind of seeing that for you the last yeah well from, yeah my perspective is pretty emotional to be honest mm. I um asked him into our huddle in the pre-game for our final speech and um you know referenced Hilly's contribution to our group and our club a little bit and actually asked him before that if he'd like to say something I thought it would be really powerful but obviously Hilly being Hilly he was like no 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 <laughs> no thanks you want to say it? No. um yeah, so it was obviously uh, a pretty big week for Stephen and his family, but I thought the way that he was acknowledged by the crowd at half time, I, I noticed him going around on the golf cart and it was pretty emotional for, for me at that time even. And um, yeah, to get the win and, and cheer him off, I thought it was great uh, acknowledgement for his, his contribution. Um, yeah, go on. Tabs, uh, you're, you're from Bright, Victoria. Yep, yep. Lovely part of the world um, up at uh, the Alpine Valley. So uh, yeah, Pretty much grew up there from the age of 10 um, until I was drafted. Uh, love to get back there. Um, you know, it's a good what, spot. You been there? Uh, not bright, no. Yeah, that's Too nice. Cold no. Up there. What's, uh, I've been to the surrounds. What's it like playing for Murderfoot in the Murray League coming through? Yeah, the ovens in Murray. So, uh, yeah, I'd played probably junior football in bright. Um, and, yeah, was uh, the stronger league then was the ovens in Murray. So probably half an hour up the road where... Yep. Jack Crisp is from, uh, so we sort of uh, came through the ranks at the same age. Um, crispy. Crispy, Weapon. yeah. It's a tough place to uh, play football if you're a tall forward. You know, it's uh, pretty cold and wet and uh, winter can be pretty miserable. But, um, yeah, it was really enjoyable. Pretty strong league when I came through. So I, I played a bit of TAC Cup uh, through the 17 and 18 years. And then uh, at the time, Stan Magro, one of the sort of great waffle coaches and former Collingwood player, uh, he, came, he was the coach at the time at Myrtleford and um, played a bit of senior football there. And at the time, I think uh, Barry Hall was there uh, playing for one of the op opposition clubs. How, Brendan, old, how old were you with that? Seven? Oh, 17 or 18, or 18 Seven. through those years. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, as I said, Barry Hall, Brendan Favola, I think we pa paid him... Um, you only pay, play home games to Yarrawonga. I think we paid him 10K or something and he kicked about 14 goals on us. So, <laughs> um, yeah, sealed our fate. But uh, we had some really good moments. We've got some great, great mates from that club and, um, you know, we really improved through those years and uh, because, of, you know, a lot of ex-AFL players and it was probably the highest standard in Victoria outside the VFL, uh, you know, got a, um, you know, recruiters that had their eye on those legs and, you um, you know, games were sort of tele recorded and um, got an opportunity to play some pretty good football and got into a VCFL um, Vic Country team versus um, the uh, Metro Amateurs and got a best of the ground there. And so that's what got the um, ball rolling. I was pretty lucky, actually, one, one year. I still, to this day, think I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got drafted. I got reported um, one week and the incident happened in the uh, third quarter. Um, but on the went to the tribunal, uh, and the umpire said it actually. Um, he recorded it as happening in the second quarter. So on a technicality, I got off and was able to play in this um, rep game where that sort of got things rolling. So um, still to this day, yes. I think if yeah that didn't go my way, I probably wouldn't have got drafted. Probably just you know Gee, was how much that and bright you? still and yeah. How did that? How much that cost you bribing the the uh, umpire like that? Jeez, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think that you know country footy leagues. So I remember I got. a even the waffle got a fine for Peel one one game. It was Joe Brody, uh, the manager, told me at the time. He's like, "Yeah, mate, we've uh, you've got a fine. You've been cited." It's like, "Oh, can't afford." It was the first year on rookie wages. He's like, 50 bucks." And I was like, "Oh, can't wait. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, easy." What was that? The AFL what was that fine for? Yeah. Could you tell us that fine in the waffle? The Peel one. Oh, yeah. You'll have to look it up. I can't remember actually, but pretty stupid oh, I think I think we know I think we know yeah. well. some body language on a televised game but yeah, yeah. Man, was getting, a bit, of flack, getting a bit of flack from the uh, Bassendine uh, in the forward pocket Famous, yeah. faithful what, what do you call it there the um uh, the what's it called it's on the hill uh a few grips mates 
It's old man's yeah. wheelchair for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you mentioned the the climate where you grew up. You donned yep. a few long sleeves coming through the ranks. Nah. Especially, nah, nah. No, no, not never. even at school. Yeah, shorts. Yeah, shorts all the time. Yeah. You're a Mel Mel whip it coming over. Only you, when mate. you're on the slopes. Even then, it'd be a t-shirt sometimes. So, yeah. One um, thing about the, the tabs, it doesn't get cold. Like, and I actually yeah. swear swear by that. You would rarely spot yeah. the man in jeans or kind of a long sleeve jumper because it just gets too hot, or or just refuses yeah, to admit that he's really cold. Really sensitive so. to heat. Yeah. Then anyway, after that, after you got let off, drafted yeah. with pick eleven. So sec in the rookie draft, first round, yeah. yeah. first round, yeah. first round, yeah. first round, yeah. yeah, first round of rookie rookie draft at least. Um, ended up debuting in round thirteen. Yeah. Uh, any memories of that? That was, yeah, that was yeah. Fond memories of that we were a pretty strong team at the mo at that time. Uh, I think we had some injuries. Aaron and even Pav that game yeah. uh, played at um, Subiaco, got the win. I think one of my first marks. I think the ball was like flat, so I had to change it over before I even got my first kick. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's right. I, I think, I think that, that happened. Yeah. Grabbed it. I was like, yeah. Crowds kicked it to you me. You crushed and, the ball on yeah. your first mark. Yeah. I was that eager because I, I don't think I had a kick to like. Half time had about six handballs and you just needed to get some leather on leather on the boot. So, um, good to get that one off the uh, back. But uh, any goals? No goals. I kicked one the next week against Geelong, but yeah, that was that was a real tough one. I think I think we even rested a few more guys that next week um, against Geelong down at yeah Skill Stadium or whatever. And yeah. then you look around, you got Harry Taylor on me, and then um, you know all Australians everywhere. Corey Enright. Um, Tom Lonigan, stuff like that. It was just, that was a tough night and pretty inexperienced forward line. Myself, Jack Hanneth, I think Mick Barlow in their high half forward role. But apart from that, yeah, it was it was a tough game and Harry got the three votes on me. So How, uh, how many games into it did you, you got a Rising Star nomination? What round What round was that? How many games into it? Uh, I think that might may have been the next, the following year. Oh, okay. Or few, maybe few, goals, few goals there? Or? Yep, yeah, kicked... Um, Kicked a few against Brisbane, I think. Um, actually, no, that might have been 2013. Yeah, that was 2013. Um, but yeah, it's by around 23 where they've run out of um, people to give it a nomination <laughs> to. So, <laughs> go on, in the cereal go box. On, go on, yeah. mate. <laughs> box, you reckon? It's self-deprecating. Now, uh, from where you started from physically to yeah. the specimen you are now, Jail mentioned in our team meeting that you're the, most, the ideal AFL specimen, physical specimen. Uh, but both your senior coaches, Ross and now Jail, have... Um, Identified you as the hardest trainer at the club. Any yeah, oh, not a heap of truth to that. I think I think there's more elite blokes than me at the footy club. But yeah, Ross would always be. Uh, you know, Ross would go into the club. You know, outside hours and occasionally you just know when his schedule is and you rock up at the same time. <laughs> Clever. Give you a few pats on the back. All, but, all, um, all about perspective, isn't it? Yes, yeah, nah. perspective, not reality in this game. I think so. Um, yeah, I think coming in, I was about. 85, 85 kilos, 86 kilos. I probably lost a little bit of weight when I first got drafted. I had glandular fever and sent me back a few year, a uh, few weeks. Yep. Uh, a few kegs. Yeah, probably was not allowed to come to the club for a good couple of months and lost a bit of weight. And then um, at the time, coming through Peel Resis and I think the Resis were getting smashed at that time. So it was pretty hard to get a kick there, especially playing forward. Um, yeah, it wasn't long after that, got an opportunity. Uh, in a pretty good year where we uh, played in the grand final. But um, yeah, I was, didn't get an opportunity then, but it was great to be a part of. And yeah, looking back, it was just a great experience and yeah, it'd be good to get back there. And um, over the last few years, you've been establishing yourself as uh, our primary target and attack, a key full, one of the best key forwards in the comp. And last year, finally able to keep your feet bones together. Yep, yep. And uh, had a breakout year. What'd you come, all Australian squad, uh, fourth in the Coleman, our, lead, our leading goal kicker as well. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I think um, probably going back to 20, 2018, like I started feeling really com comfortable and I got some really good starts to the season. Um, I think 2018, uh, played till round six and then um, got a stress fracture after getting a pretty good start. And then the following year, consecutive, like very similar injuries, um, made it to round nine. Um, but yeah, I, I was pretty confident if I could, um, yeah, get some continuity with my football, um, the output would would be pretty decent. And I think we had a, re you know, a real young list and um, getting some good opportunities. But it was just staying on the park and uh, coming into last year, 
uh, when the season was was delayed, I was like, yeah, pretty filthy. And um, as you know, everyone was eager to get out there, but I think I was a bit more so after having sort of two injury sort of interrupted seasons. Uh, so it was good to play some play some football, even though you know, given the circumstances, shortened games and yeah. uh, away in hubs. But yeah, I sort of relished the opportunity. And um, so we've mentioned you're a beast trainer and recently Josh Tracy, one of our new up and coming key forwards has mentioned that you've taken him under his wing. Yeah. Uh, what does that involve exactly? Tell him to get out of the forward 50 and talk, a bit, of, yeah, talk come, a bit of pump. Yeah. Come and spray, block. Come, come and block for me, mate. Spray, spray, the, spray the midfielders and, you know. Um, <laughs> no, as, you, as you said, he's a, he's a big kid and a country Victoria boy. And yeah, like he's looking at kids coming in now. You probably even would say the same thing. They're just so, so much more developed and, um, yes, yeah, such better players at that age. Like, yeah, um, big Hoona, 19, big boy. Big boy. Um, Monster. Yeah, sort of ready-made and yeah, really enjoying it. And, um, yeah, he's going to do some really exciting things in the next year, year or two. So, yeah. Creating space. That's no, what he's no, doing no, for no. you, mate. In the next yeah, years, clear, the clear, the, clear, clear the 50. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll launch into our next segment called Quick Hands. We're going to fire some quick questions at you. I want some quick answers. And we might see if we can circle That's back to maybe a few of these answers. That segment loves it. Yeah. Any time this is a griff. No, no, no. It's his question. It's his question. Why the number 20 Guernsey? Uh, I think that was the only available at the time. I drafted, uh, we had to take 42 and had an opening there. So um, had the eyes on number 18 or number 12. But at the time, Lukey McFarlane and uh, John Griffin were there. So All right. That's a slow start. That was not a quick answer. Sorry. Team you barracked for as a kid? Hawthorne. Last time you called your mum? Mm, three weeks. Have you ever told her that you love her? No. Last meal on earth, what would it be? Pun of blueberries, probably. <laughs> Only fruit I eat. Weirdest unit at the club? Uh, drizzy. <laughs> Coffee of choice? Yeah, strong latte. Not, not by Griff, he's, he's known as the butcher. <laughs> Copy. Best football moment so far in your career? Uh, probably playing in yeah, the prelims. Most used emoji? Don't use them. First car? Uh, Red Rocket, it was a Commodore. And what do you drive now? Hilux, scratched up Hilux. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing about Griffin Logue? Weirdest thing? Oh, he's a real... Uh, Real average punter, actually. Yeah. Uh, where do you sit in team meetings? Uh, front left, where you can only see probably 80% of the screen. <laughs> Tactical. Pre-game routine or ritual? Anything you do? The last couple of, year, uh, couple of years, I uh, have pancakes before every game. doesn't matter if it's like a night game. Like The last meal I'll have is pancakes. Do you listen to any podcasts? Yeah. Favourite? This one. Good. Uh, best dressed teammate? Ooh. Caleb Sorong. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Caleb Sorong. <laughs> He's got, oh, a, got a blueberry in there. <laughs> you get a water? Caleb's got a couple of those. Worst dressed? Last one. Poor oh, Moose. Yeah. Moose. Walks He's around like the other day, go to the beach and he's got the budgies on. Um, saggy budgies. As sa- well. Saggy Makes budgies. And, he, and he's got like the tracksuit top on. So you're walking, jacket. yeah. You no, walk into like one of his... order a coffee and he's got these saggy... No, I was, so I was just looking around to see if there was any Frio no, budgies. So, no, there's not snaggy. actually. No, no, he wears some, he wears, he wears some yeah. shockers. Um, all right, well, that was Dave's favourite segment, but back to a few more tab stories. Um, mentioned being an elite unit and you've yeah. made some pretty good eating habits. Would you say you're fussy? Yeah, fussy. Real and fussy. can you confirm or deny you only eat things made in Australia? No, I try, try to do that. Obviously, when you travel, you can't, but At some home, things no. out of control. Yeah, always as a kid, I'd um, you know, have, to, have to be Australian produce. Bit of a, How old were you know, when it like, started? Oh, young. Like, yeah. Did you used to ruffle? Eight, is it true you ruffled through the bin to check packets and say, no, no, no. No, no. I just, I just know like I could tell you in most products where they're made. And it's more because of, you know, I just wouldn't, not a phobia of the country or anything like that. It's just you don't want it sitting on, um, you know, shipping. You just want fresh produce, support locals. So your mum s- slips in some international Yeah, I'd be right over it. Yeah. Nah. She'd try to tuck it away deep in the bin and I'd just be, yeah. I'd catch her Sprayer, out. Sprayer yeah. or still, still eat it yeah, or just refuse to eat it? it? Yeah, no, refuse to eat it. Throw it out. <laughs> um, 
something I try to sort of do still, but yeah, there's things that you control, you know, when you travel yeah. team hotel, but yeah, I can tell you most products where they're made. You mentioned because it's, because it's in cargo, you don't like it, that's not fresh, but I just don't. If you, not, not if you the same were, standards as if you were laid out a fresh banana or some fresh avocados, no, nah. you wouldn't go near them. Hate, yeah, pretty much hate all fruits apart from you know berries or something like that. But anything else, hate Pine, pineapple. We eat pineapple, yeah. very fussy, but um, yeah, hate hate bananas. Never never had one, but I still hate them. <laughs> bananas, <laughs> avocado, and mandarins in yeah. particular. I don't like yeah you know, with avocado like. I'd try and eat around it maybe, but um, yeah. But right you've genuinely never much. tried a banana anyway? I was stitched up once actually, but yeah, eating one. I didn't know it was a banana. It was at, I think this Brazilian meats place and it was like deep fried right. um, banana and someone's like, I said, oh, what's that? And they said, oh, it's chicken. Hooked into it. As soon as I bit through it, I was like, knew straight away. And just, so is it the taste or the texture? Taste or and texture, or yeah. The smell? Just everything. Yeah, everything. smell, hate smell, hate everything, right. everything about them. Pretty um yeah, but yeah, fussy. Yeah, sure. Pretty, you're a hands-on kind of bloke. Like before you draft, you were, uh, what was it the? What I were did it? A, I was did a bit of a gap year where I was did a bit of auto spark. Auto spark, yeah. So pretty pretty hands-on. Um, would Not really, you'd be trusted no. to like tie knots and stuff? Did you ever do scouts or any? You didn't do scouts or anything, but you'd be trusted to tie knots. Good country boy, yeah. surely. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, there was just no, a I didn't story. Do like you, but yeah, there's <laughs> a story just when you went and visited uh, one of your mates in Cairns and you trust kayaks went trust, yeah, flying, you trust with yeah. tying down the kayaks and the knots. That was his job, mate. He's a plumber. He shouldn't. <laughs> he'd, he'd be used to yeah, <laughs> tying up. I think that, yeah, he'd be used to tying up uh, you know ladders on the roof. So um, halfway down, it was the a two man job. Halfway down the highway, going 80, 80 k's, and the wind got whatever. underneath these kayaks and just went flying. You just heard a crash. Looked behind and there, yeah. 200 meters in the rear view mirror so yeah, yeah pretty dangerous but got away with that was, that one he's he's kind of been it was pretty adamant it was you trusted with the no 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 me two-man job me. fair enough no. last one the probably the most infamous that we've seen thanks to our good mate tommy sheridan was just the the diesel incident yeah, run us yeah. through is it was it tommy's fault or kind of you, you always kind yeah, of so, said it was tom's fault so this but, bloke He's the type of bloke who would like, he always tries to put a bit of, you know, an incentive on it to pick you up. So he's like, come on, mate, pick us up. What time do you get in? He's like, oh, 5.30. But, you know, we'll go and get breakfast and NFL starting and, you know, it'll be grouse time. I'll, I'll, I'll shout, I'll shout, um, I'll shout Brecky. So, um, you know, we're driving. Oh, so I got to pick him up, uh, running low on fuel, running late as always. And he's like, where are you? Where are you? It's, mate, trying to get his, his, uh, having a go at me because I think an NFL game started. Um, I said, oh, I'm just filling up. So on the phone to him, hang up, fill up, drive off. And then um, the old Hilux, it just started getting a bit jumpy. And I was like, it's not, that's not good. <laughs> it's, only, it's only about four weeks old. Um, so I still, had the, um, still had the habit from the unleaded car. But um, I was like, oh, surely I didn't, surely I didn't put diesel in. Uh, surely I didn't put unleaded in. Yeah. Um, because I remember it was a, a black nozzle. It would have to be diesel. And it just wasn't sounding good. So called cool. up called up BP and said, G'day, I, I was just in. I was on, you know, uh, paid about, you know, 50 10 minutes ago. Um, can you tell me uh, can you tell me what uh, what fuel I just put in? And she said, Oh, you put in um you put in un unleaded fuel blast at the 98 or something. And I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> so at that stage I just got got Tommy. And he's barking at me saying, yeah. mate, the NFL is starting. Yeah, and I'm up. like, what do you want me to do? I can't keep driving. It's going to get in the fuel injection and then the car will be, you know, well and truly Cactus. stuffed. So pulled to the side <laughs> of the road, um, just got to a, a servo and, it, you know, dialed someone. It was a, probably an hour, hour wait, 90 minute wait. Yeah. And he's just barking orders at me. <laughs> um, Classic train. Tell me to go in and get lollies. He's like, you've, you've cooked me here. <laughs> and I'm like... I saw, you know, it was 5.30 in the morning, still half asleep. Had the new new car, so I was probably still in habit, but yeah, yeah it didn't end well. Now, uh, another one of your <coughs> footballing uh, achievements, holding a record in the Which league one? possibly, but uh, the red vest. Yep. Talk yep. us through that. And any particular moments where you thought you were stiff? Oh, you're stiff every week. But yeah, that was, <laughs> um, that was a shocking, that was a shocking rule. The, uh, the sub, I think... 
Tommy and Nick Subin and that were off in the green, uh, the green vest, so they would come on. But um, you knew if you're like, yeah, mainly a tall player and you hadn't had a um, great game up yeah. until half time. Keep a few goals, you probably. You'd be looking around and you knew the, ta- you know, the tap on the shoulder, or the runner would get sent out and you'd you'd get the red vest. But um, yeah, I was, you know, I recently I think I just played my hundredth, but I've probably only played. 90 games worth of footy because I think I had about 13 <laughs> red vests where I played two and a half quarters and then, yeah, lonely place. But, you know, we were a pretty good team then and um, it was either probably going to be me or Zach Clark. And, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I was the last. I think David Hale, the coach now, he was probably, I think he got the record, but I would have been close, oh, right. close to him. He actually got the last ever red vest in a granny. Yeah. Um, we got beaten by Hawthorne in that prelim and, I actually got to keep the red vest, so yeah, oh, still got it at home beauty. somewhere. But hanging out, um, cheers. And yeah. uh, so, talk us through your behaviour when you come off. They'd hand you the red vest, just calmly put it on, yeah. take your assigned seat. Or yeah, you had to put it on with bit. grace and dignity. But um, <laughs> yeah, you look around and yeah, Mick Bow. I thought it was pretty funny all the time. But um, what about when you're coming yeah. off? You're coming off and you're seeing the green vested player. Yeah, getting warming up. up. If they're doing the quad, on, yeah, if they're doing the quad st- uh, quad stretch. You knew it was um, <laughs> few leg, few, few, few leg swings. Yeah, I wouldn't have being a tall forward. They wouldn't get much of a rotation so if the runner came out here you'd almost like try and avoid him or you just how many told you to come off for it if you told you to come to the bench you just try and stay out there as long as possible but how many times you refused to come off and just stay involved <coughs> in the oh, well, no, you it? couldn't you you couldn't because yeah ross would just yeah you'd barrel get yeah. it get it absolute um spray from him but when's the earliest you were subbed off i think in the game just after half time like real early like in, the, right. in the third just, quarter still got a run of it yeah it's probably better than coming on as the uh the medi sub these days but um yeah it was hard you'd you'd you know you're prepping for a game you'd know was if you just, didn't get off to a good start it was, it, gen- was it generally just for like form reasons or Mostly. Not for, sometimes it was just fresh technical. legs they just yeah. they had, fresh they had the discretion to use it at any point so yeah. um i remember it was, it was a i remember nick subin once got yeah. subbed out just after quarter time yeah. or maybe just before really yeah. we were having a stinker and he obviously yeah. hadn't had a great start, yeah, but just it. after quarter time, I reckon. Which but yeah, geez. really, really affected yeah. the prep. Like you'll yeah. just sit in the back of your mind, and you'll be looking over, and yeah, sure, sure enough. enough, sure enough. Shocking. And uh, I noticed this morning, tabs at our Coburn base. You have a particular photo. A lot of guys have different things, like perhaps a saying or our trademark, something. Some family members maybe stick up, stuck up in there on the inside of their locker. But I noticed uh, the picture on the inside of your locker door this morning. Do you want to talk us through that? Oh, is it the one with Benny Marks? Benny, yeah, yeah. Benny Marks. Our, uh, our recruiter. So, yeah, he always gives me a bit of, bit of shit, I think, um, <laughs> about goal kicking and that. He tries to get me down and teach me a few things. But, um, yeah, funny bloke and plenty of banter. Did you take that photo, ask for that photo, or were you given that photo? I was given that photo. I think, I think it's, it's, from his, from his it fa- it's from his Facebook. And Luke, yeah. Luke Valente went and printed it, it off and yeah. whacked it in Tab's locker. I always get stuck into him about bad haircuts. And, yeah, he always... Yeah, it gives me a spray about not taking marks or something. So yeah, <laughs> said good one with Griff actually because he's like, um, he's always saying Griff, Griff an early pick. He's like, mate, when are you going to start performing? <laughs> they took, they took, uh, we took uh, you over Power Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, bailed me up in my first year and said, mate, <laughs> yeah. I don't need you to deliver. <laughs> Started playing some footy. He's like, there you go, mate. They're not asking anymore. <laughs> but, uh, he's a good man. He's, he's a good man, Betty. To have around the club. Yeah. Um, also, hear a lot of stories about your tabs, but what listeners might not know, you're very studious. Uh, worked hard off field, same as Dave. Uh, just about to uh, graduate soon, or what? Do you, what what's your yeah, I, what's your current um, degree that you've just just about doing to complete? A, doing a post grad uh, thing at the moment, but um, got into that. But yeah, I've got one unit finishing off this one unit, sort of like a a work experience, like getting workplace ready unit at the moment bit of a mickey mouse unit to be honest but um yeah we've doing that and it's finance and economics um commerce degree so um chipping away at that it's probably it's probably not the most exciting thing you're doing off field because one of your your other yeah, um, nicknames so. is bart bart tabiner can you yeah. kind of uh yeah go go on that and kind of indulge us into why you are referred to as bart to many of us well um you know, a lot of the guys. I'll give you. I'll go, you got. You got two minutes just to talk right. talk about Zed Run. Just All right. tell so, us. I'll give you the plug. Yeah, Zed yeah. Run. So, a bit of a quarantine hobby, and this is where you <laughs> can, um, yeah, own a digital horse. I think Hamish and Andy they speak about it on their podcast a fair bit, but um, yeah, essentially these horses have got their own 
char- characteristics, unique traits uh, by these things, and they they race um, three, four times a day on the Ethereum Oops. blockchain. Eight so all, all results are up there. No manipulation, no dodgy race stewards or match, <laughs> match fixing. <laughs> Thing I like about it is, and they, they still like you can still um, enter them in races. You can't really wager on them, so you pay to enter them in races. Yeah. Um, how much? But it's all, want. it's all it's all in different, crypto. It's all in Ethereum. Um, it's yeah, all different through, different through diff, different distances and stuff like that. Um, add a benefit of no training fees and you know no animals get get harmed. But it's a lie. Uh, it's got the future. A, got a pretty decent stable. I think one of them's ready for breeding uh, today. So <laughs> you can get back it. home and <laughs> breed create some uh, little baby horse, digital horses. And can, you, yeah. can you give a shout out to the current owners that are in your trusty yeah, we got, stable? Got a decent stable. Griff, Tommy Sheridan, Lockie Schultz, yep. Joel Hamling, um, Coxie. I'd say it's um, more of a game than sort of yeah, out and out gambling. But yeah, a lot of statistics. Race speeds, trying to find the right distance, and yeah. a lot of maths, a lot of maths to it. And so we spent a bit of time looking backwards, um, the game on the weekend, obviously. But let's take a moment to look forward. We have got a huge clash this weekend. Yep. Twelve fifteen Sunday in Hobart. It's been confirmed. Have, have you ever played in Hobart, Dad? No, I haven't. Launceston, yeah, tough place. I'm guessing to play football. It's going to be pretty pretty cold down there, but yeah, we're excited to you know season's well and truly alive for us and. <coughs> we ba- yeah, uh, obviously just have to keep winning um, to keep our chances alive. And I think Collingwood and Essendon uh, are a bit reliant on, on that result. But I think that's played after our game, is it? Uh, on Sunday Essendon, afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll sort of be on the plane while that's been happening. But something. whatever happens, happens. But um, yeah, we'll yeah. try and give ourselves the best chance. Griff, how did you go last time we played St Kilda? Trial for the think, oldest I think it was the, the, yeah, I think it was my first year. And Nick Rewalt got me with the... Oh. It was the last quarter. I think we were, we were up by nine at the stage or maybe it was a kick in it and uh, I gave away a free kick to Tim Membry, top of the 50 and, uh, you know, blonde hair kind of Nick, oh. Re- Nick Reward as well <laughs> turned around and went, yeah, chuck it here, champ. Was, keep in mind, he's my idol at the time. And <laughs> said, no worries, no, you take it, so Nick. Like, take it, mate. <laughs> and he's just giving the old, like, let it go straight past him, look straight at the umpire, 50, um, gave away 50 penalty and... Didn't, uh, that was it. Ross wasn't too happy with it after. So did it, that get brought up in the review? You reckon? From I think he looked me in the eyes and said, "Yeah, you got played, mate." <laughs> so play. that was the nice, nicest way he's ever put it. So, so I'll sorry to bring that up. That was unintentional. Sorry about. Yeah. Sure, bringing it was, up that hurt, no, it did well. the, Was it um, Siren Gate, the last one at Hobart? No, I've never played in Hobart. Siren Gate was yeah. Launceston as well. Oh, um, was that Launceston? Yeah. That was right. last time we played St Kilda yeah. in Tassie, though. But. Yeah. 2006, but um, hope Hobart's nice than Lonnie because Launceston is shocking. <laughs> I'd, I'd almost <laughs> said you didn't mind Lonnie. Oh, don't, don't let uh, also, a cheeky plug for the last round of the year the Carlton Dry Siren Sessions are back in Freya this weekend. So grab your mates and grab a pint at the Federal Hotel this Sunday, just down the road from here, actually, uh, and watch us take on the Saints. There'll be live music, $8 pints of Carlton Dries, and heaps of prize on offer. So another plug from me, actually. Uh, as you know, my girlfriend's sister, Amy, has got a Disney concert coming up in Perth. First official Disney uh, concert. So, hang on. Your tickets? That's hang not on. I need a plug. Who you said you can get flung? I know you, wouldn't, hey. I know you wouldn't put in the run sheet. But, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh, no. Well, actually, it leads into this bit. We're going to hey, wrap Disney, up. Disney, don't even take his kids. You know, yeah, fair, that's, that's nah. true. Well, we'll let you finish the plug. We're going to say anything tickets. you want to get off your chest, Tex. Yeah. You anything you want to cover? That's about it. Yep. So, we get, I think tickets are on Ticket Tech. Disney concert, Disney concert sometime when in is October, it? October, is it? October, I think. October. Yeah, I don't know right. exactly. Should be good. Dates, but. Good singer. All right, well, Tabs, thanks for joining us, mate. It was nice to get a rebuttal from your good self. And as we mentioned, you've been coming up in every pod. So uh, it was great to talk to you. Is there anything else quickly you want to get off your chest? Anything else you want to throw out there? No, bit pretty of dirt, much, see if it sticks. Pretty much. Tommy Sheridan's just a con man. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, just a real, real used car salesman. That bloke, so, um, yeah. Nice way to finish. Well, thank you very much. Well done again, Griff. We're, that's us done and dusted from the dock pop up in Frio. Get down here and get your merch, Cheers. and uh, we'll see you next week. See you later. Like and subscribe.